Good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, I'd like to first thank uh, KSIDC for inviting us and uh, uh, giving an opportunity to speak to all of you. Um, we are aware that you are a very enlightened uh, audience here. Uh, for the purpose of uh, keeping some timelines, I know that uh, we have actually gone beyond our schedule. I located 20 minutes are actually over, but I like to condense it to um, important points that I thought would be relevant uh, to all of you. Um, well, the topic recommended, suggested to me, is uh, natural gas and affordable solution. So I'd like to perhaps talk about uh, a few things. Uh, but I think all of us should keep in mind that we are in a country which has about 16% um, of the world's population and just about 0.5% of the world's resources. We are a country which uh, practically would continue to import and depend upon imported energy sources, um, particularly in the in the, in the field of uh, oil and gas sector, if you see. So with that kind of a constraint or boundary conditions, we should see what are the best options for the country and what are the best options for state like Kerala. Uh, I would uh, deal with uh, uh, these four basic areas, the India's gas scenario, the infrastructure, uh, how things are changing, um, LNG in India, and then a uh, specific area of pricing and affordability, and also how the gas is being used in the major sectors in the country. Well, India is right now, if you see, uh, as per the reports, is the fourth largest consumer after the major economies of USA, China, and Russia. And uh, it amounts to about 4.6% of the world energy cons consumption. So we are a major energy consumer and therefore, we should be conscious of our consumption. If we grow at 6.5%, which is the kind of forecast, uh, then uh, our requirements would be more than what presently it exists. But if you see in terms of per capita energy consumption, we are one of the lowest ranks uh, levels in the world. Uh, we amount 0.8 million tons of um, oil equivalent if you see, compared to the world average of about 1.8. So with the growth, and we are one of the fastest growing economy, if you see in the BRICS area, countries there. So if we have to grow f faster, this per capita would increase definitely. And that increase would mean tremendous pressure on <coughs> seeking and acquiring energy in larger quantities and that to affordable prices. That, that makes sense for India as an economy. So we should know in what direction we are actually moving and what are the you know, boundary conditions that we need to work on that. And energy is central to any development in the country, for any country as such. Uh, if you see what has happened uh, in the energy mix, if you see consumption in the world, um, you see uh, world has actually ended up more using more coal. Uh, the crude oil consumption has marginally decreased. The gas consumption has more or less stabilized about 24% or so. And the good thing that we see is the emergence of renewables to a now measurable levels when, when we come to world. What happens to India? If you see, we are still unlike the world average, we still consume coal maximum. In fact, we've ended up using more coal in the last uh, five, six years, 53%. But the fastest growing segment in the energy mix is gas, actually. We are about now 11% uh, of the energy mix. And if we have to go, if you see in the world, it is about 23, 24%. If we have to grow, um, and the, it is growing very fast to about 23% as world average, uh, the gas business would require tremendous amount of investment in pipeline, in infrastructure, um, uh, all sorts of uh, things that are required for a robust gas business. Uh, and things have to be doubled, tripled. Uh, so that's the kind of challenge that we have. But this is the segment which is the fastest growing 
in the, in, the, in, in the country. Just look at that, what is the projected um, you know, production in the country and what is the demand kind of thing. So if you see the blue line, which is the domestic gas supply, uh, over the years, if you see from now onwards to 2029, 30, there is an increase in gas production in domestic, um, but not a dramatic change. There is a steady increase, but not in line with what the country needs in terms of meeting its demand. And just see the demand is just growing, galloping actually. And it's only, the gap is only widening. So if we have to come to a world average of gas consumption in the energy mix, and if this is the scenario, I think we need to really look at that, how do we are going to meet, and what is the plan that the government has, the companies have, to really address this uh, the solution. And I think any developing economy would have to perhaps look at natural gas consumption very closely because this is definitely the cleanest fuel, most efficient fuel, and also considering that worldwide the major finds of oil and gas you see have been the gas finds. Huge gas finds have been found, and that's a little comfort that we get that in coming future perhaps gas availability in the world would be perhaps better. And with this better availability, maybe there would be impact on the pricing as well. They might soften. And this augurs well for a country like India. Uh, if you see the uh, gas demand projected in different segments, if you see uh, power, fertilizer, city gas, these are the preferred um, segments in terms of gas allocation by the government of India as per the gas utilization policy. Uh, power and fertilizer together consume about 65-70% of the gas actually. And therefore, um, the other segments, many of them have to use gas either which was allocated much earlier in a very small quantity or perhaps depend upon the imported gas. So power, if you see in terms of um, the energy purposes uses, it uses about um, 56 here compared to fertilizer in the non-energy purposes utilization 31 together if you see uh, they, they comprise about 65 70 percent of the of the of the utilization demand consumption in the country and mind this consumption or the, uh, the demand is actually um, is not taking into consideration uh, latent demand that exists in the country in various places uh, which has not been systematically captured. So actual values, if you see in, in terms of demand, would be much higher actually. Uh, within the natural gas, actually, many countries have been supplying for years, decades actually, gas through piped pipelines. Uh, there have been major pipelines in the Europe, if, if you see, um, traditionally they have been getting supplies from Russia. But both producers, as well as consumers have realized that they should have other options as well. And we see a trend that all those major uh, producers who were traditionally supplying by pipeline have started moving towards LNG option because through LNG they can supply to any country in the world. And they have bigger uh, markets available, different markets available to them and they can perhaps get negotiate better prices on that. The consumers on the end have an option also. They have a benchmark of the piped gas supply and look at LNG separately as that. And that's what is happening in Europe. There is a competition between the piped gas as also LNG. But LNG business within the gas business is developing much faster. As you see, is almost about 9% compared to the um, the CAGR for pipe gas supply around 5%. In the last couple of years, if you see, there's been a tremendous change and, and much faster growth in the LNG exports compared to pipeline exports there. Um, any LNG chain or LNG business or project is actually a capital intensive. So therefore, uh, the investments come in when you have frozen the entire value chain, starting from the production to the consumer. At least 80% of that or a major part of that is frozen. Uh, remaining part can be perhaps traded. 
and therefore it's important that all segments are in place, whether it's the supplier or the transportation, which is through ships, the LNG buyer, the transporter has to be there, otherwise you can't uh, supply uh, gas from the terminal uh, if there are no pipelines there. Pipeline availability is a very important aspect for developing gas business in any country. You always compare ourselves with developed country and say, why can't we uh, you know, have a similar thing? If we take an example of US, US has 2.5 million miles of pipelines compared to our some 13,000 kilometers. So we need to focus actually on developing the pipeline network first. We must have a grid where we can supply gas either from north, south, east, west, and can physically transfer gas. Unless that is there, I think this uh, gas business would be uh, affected uh, quite, uh, quite a lot. Uh, we have been always saying that some of the major pipelines, whether you call it gas highways or otherwise, must be at the government initiative. And other companies can come up for smaller pipelines, spur pipelines, and the uh, city gas network on that. But pipeline is a necessity for developing gas business in any country. Then of course the last is the gas consumer which buy over the, the LNG. So ended price here would be a sum total of all the activities and their prices in the, in the LNG and the gas supply to the consumer. Uh, LNG India, if you see, there is a hydrocarbon vision, the government document which says that uh, if you take about 5 to 6 percent of growth in the ENP sector, um, based on that, the rate of growth would be around, energy would be around uh, 7 percent. And uh, very clearly and very important, the third point, if you see, and I like your attention to that, uh, given India's growing energy requirement, an unlikelihood of matching increase in the domestic supplies, despite some significant oil and gas finds recently, the import dependence is only going to accentuate sharply in the coming years. So we need to be prepared and we need to be taking some actions right now to prepare ourselves and we should not be reactive to, to the situations there. Presently, if you see, the country has uh, import capacity about 18 million tons per annum um, through the three terminals that are uh, uh, present and operative right now. And these three terminals meet about 35% of the total gas demand of the country. Uh, regarding Petronet, we have um, uh, three projects. The Hit terminal is the biggest terminal in this part of the world. It is 10 million ton capacity being utilized over 100% capacity for the last two years. So we are expanding it to um, 15 million ton, maybe more in coming time. And that's priority number one for us. It's well connected, good pipeline connectivity, more connectivity is coming up. We are supplying to some part projects there. Um, the recent government uh, 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 you know, notification permits us to supply um, from July onwards to any pipeline connected with us uh, without any custom duty and swapping being uh, possible now. So I think things are changing pretty much on that. Kochi terminal. We are very uh, happy that it's uh, time for now giving it a fixed date for commissioning. We hope that first week of August uh, uh, we should be working on this commissioning and we are very eagerly waiting that um, Kochi gets its city gas supply from us and we would be very happy to actually supply gas under our brand name of Taral to Kochi or maybe other cities in, in Kerala. So we are all set now for uh, actually supplying gas from here and we have just one small pipeline section of about 40 45 kilometers commissioned we have to wait for the other pipeline to come up which we feel that would be maybe around uh, next year then the utilization of the terminal would go um, we would like to see that more and more gas consume gets consumed in kerala like in um, gujarat whatever gas we import more than 40 percent gets consumed in in Gujarat, in the state of Gujarat. And that's but it's one of the main reason of their, you know, flip into the industrialization. Uh, we would like same thing to happen in Kerala, and we are very eager to really see more and more consumers change over to, to gas. 
Gangavaram is our third project, coming up uh, very close to Vizag. Uh, we have moved ahead quite a bit on that. Um, presently, uh, the, the environment clearance is at the Ministry of uh, Environment Forest, Government of India. Hopefully, that would be there. So by 2015-16, perhaps, we will have 25 million ton capacity to import LNG. And with the pipeline network connectivity within the country becoming robust with three terminals, we can perhaps cater to the larger demand of the country with more pipeline uh, being in place in that. Uh, these are the three yellow ones that are our project. And you see some of the proposed pipeline network. Um, uh, and, and many of them have been approved, awarded. Uh, some of them uh, are in uh, different stages of uh, constructions. So we hope with the improved pipeline network connectivity, the three terminals can cater to the larger demand of the country. And we have further expansion options available at all the three locations. Uh, well, there are many other projects which are uh, being uh, talked about. Uh, we are not really sure about how many will take shape. But if you take into account all that are proposed, by 2020, the country should have somewhere around 60 plus billion ton capacity to import LNG and regasify, which would be a very appreciable capacity, actually. Now, coming to pricing and affordability, the main uh, area that uh, was uh, you know, indicated to me to speak on that. So some of the thoughts, I think, are relevant. Uh, India definitely is a complex gas market. When we compare to other developed gas markets, uh, there are hardly f any country you know, where you have multiplicity of contracted prices, gas prices. We have many of them, five, six of them. Um, that makes us uh, uh, complex. Some of them are by the same producer, actually. So it's difficult. Then the domestic gas pricing is sort of controlled by the government, the intervention by that. There's an allocation utilization policy. So preferred way of allocation of gas is there. So all these things have an impact on the pricing, actually. There's an inadequate gas transmission network. And there's a very high cost of transmission, actually. This all means higher cost to the actual end consumer. Many areas don't have pipeline at all. There is a demand there. So how do you really go about that? Uh, there are options by providing road, but that could be limited in the limited area, not for long term, uh, long uh, distance supplies of that. And therefore, dependability on import gas like LNG and transnational pipelines is going to be there for a long time. We have, we have been uh, discussing this transnational pipeline for years, actually. Uh, no significant uh, uh, progress has been made. Hopefully, this so-called TAPI from Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, uh, some progress has been made. Um, well, we have to see uh, how this takes shape. But even if it takes shape in 8 to 10 years' time, the landed quantities talked about is just about 30, 35 million standard cubic meters of uh, gas per day, which is not going to make a very significant impact in terms of meeting the demand. It would be a limited one. That. Also, if you see, the pricing of LNG is linked to crude oil. Majority of the suppliers, producers in the world, barring um, the US, others tend to link the pricing for LNG with the crude oil pricing. So that if there is a, uh, that, that they, they try to work out a parity, if the crude oil prices go up, uh, the gas price also goes up. Because the gas is essentially replacing some of the fuels, liquid fuels there. Um, affordability of natural gas, if you see, it varies from consumer to consumer. A city gas household may be able to pay more because there's a le level of comfort that comes in there compared to some other areas. So there's a competition vis-a-vis -vis other alternate fuels. And we'll see how it compares, the gas compares. But we feel that India needs to actually have a relook on the pricing of energy as such. 
not just gas. I think the pricing mechanism of energy in the country is little skewed. Uh, whether it's really coal, it's gas, crude oil, or, or anything as a matter of fact, actually. And there has to be some kind of a you know, relationship when it comes to pricing of energy. And we can't escape but to keep focus on a cleaner and sustainable forms of energy. We cannot, we have to, India has no option but to, over a period of time, integrate itself with the international market. We are doing right now. We import 78% of our crude oil requirements. We import more than 50% now about gas requirement, shortfall. I mean, how much we import we are, is, a, is a price issue. But we have no option but to integrate with the international market in terms of as a, as a, as a major buyer from different uh, places of our diversified portfolio. And, and we need to really develop um, expertise to have a balanced portfolio and also perhaps affordable portfolio. Now these are uh, five different uh, uh, contracts that, that are in place in the, in the country, all different uh, prices uh, uh, given to consumers. But the fact is that they are not able to get the entire quantity of gas that they require actually. If you compare in Gujarat, for example, where there is a domestic gas available and also regasified LNG available, then if you see uh, from coming time from uh, April next year in any case, or maybe earlier than that, the, the domestic gas price might be increased. We have taken for just an assumption that if you take $7 as a landfall price for the a new price for the domestic gas and keeping all the marketing margin, the base price, the taxes and all, the total price comes to about $8. And this is being talked about up to 2017 only. After that, this would transition to a pricing mechanism which will be determined by the market. So it would be perhaps uh, more liberal and the market would decide what kind of pricing would come. This is a trend we see it. So it might happen in five years, three years, four years, or maybe seven years, we don't know. But the trend is that at some point in time, and not very far from now, the pricing would be determined by market forces and that. And this may be for just two, three years time. And you compare this with the regasified LNG, which has been in the country, uh, the total price comes to about 14. What we see is the gap between the domestic gas and the imported gas is going to slowly decrease. And at some point in time, it has to come to a more closer range on that. What it means to country, what it means to consumers, what it means to future investments using gas as a fuel or as a raw material need to be examined on a long-term basis and not just for a short-term utilization. You take an example in terms of affordability. If you assume that uh, if the crude oil is at $100 uh, a barrel, exchange rate of uh, 55, of course, uh, in the last couple of days uh, when I was working on this thing, it has gone to 58 uh, plus, but for the purpose of assumption, we've taken 55. Today, LNG, is available to some quantities at a very reasonable prices of about 13.75 percent linked to the crude oil. Uh, it wasn't there, it's a, it's, a, it's a fluctuating market, but that's the prevailing market you take. And prevailing diesel prices, if you see, considering the CST at 2 percent, custom duty, what is prevails right now, RLNG delivered is about 16 compared to, if you see, naphtha, fuel oil, diesel, LPG, it is the most affordable um, source of energy. If you see what's happening, the global LNG market is very segmented market. Major three markets, and they are wide apart from there. US market, which is a closed market actually, uh, trades around 
four dollars. The European market, which is NPP and three, four other, uh, you know, benchmarks there, around ten dollars. And Japan, Korea, Taiwan, this market, JKM, um, maybe around fifteen dollars or so. This is very unique and 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 and, and a different situation that exists in the LNG marketing. This doesn't exist in, in crude oil. And we feel that this kind of um, uh, segmented market situation is going under transition some changes. Changes because of many recent developments that are taking place in the gas business world over. And like to uh, come to that point. Now, there are many things actually on this uh, uh, slide here, but one important thing is that you must see the 0 to 1.5 million tons of oil equivalent per capita consumption. The world map actually darker the region, more is the consumption there. So India definitely lies into much lesser the, the lowest segment actually here compared to when we see US or, or Canada. So the consumption has to increase. Second point here is that uh, uh, these yellow regions are the major producers. So their producers are far from actual major consumers if you see. Of course US has changed now. Sorry. But here, Europe, this majority of gas, gas consumed, Asia, Asia Pacific is the largest consumer of LNG, natural gas here. So they consume much more here. And some of the new areas, countries that are coming up as major producers are Australia, Russia, and of course, the American. Now these three things of new um, emerging markets, also also actually Africa if you see uh, this. These projects are huge projects and they can perhaps have uh, you know the capacity to double the world's production. So they can have tremendous impact on that. We right now do not know the impact that the US would have, but the potential is that large quantities of gas can be exported from US now. So all this is going to have a big impact on the availability of LNG as also that the LNG would be moving much more in all directions than what it used to be from major producer to a major consumer only. And therefore it would have tremendous impact in coming years on the pricing and which is so significant for India. And we are looking at that the softening of the prices has actually started in anticipation of the US as also the other exports for them. Also, you see the, the, the prices keep changing if anything happens in the world. We had the Fukushima, the prices went up on that. We had the, you know, summer and winter themselves have a cyclic impact on the pricing of the LNG. Very significant on that. New demands in the Latin America, Brazil and all has again uh, seen that any spare capacity is diverted quickly there. But all these things to my mind and the differential in the prices would come, would have a convergence once much larger volumes are made available and traded in the coming years. Uh, just to make a point here that uh, in the power sector, um, additional 25,000 megawatt gas, gas base is being planned in the five-year plan. That would mean that the total demand would be around 157 million cent cubic meters a day. And uh, we have to see that how uh, this is to be met. LNG can certainly complement the domestic gas production in terms of power requirement as also as the base load if the prices come down, but definitely um, all the peak can go immediately to that. And you have other advantages like um, tax incentives 
and also very low emissions actually. LNG, if you compare even with the um, natural gas, domestic natural gas is much purer actually, much purer. And therefore, today in the world, purest form of, of natural gas with minimum emissions is from the LNG. So we see that um, uh, there are consumers who are willing to pay a higher price uh, within the segment there and uh, natural gas and LNG uh, would definitely play an important role in, in uh, bridging the gap of power there uh, as a top of fuel as also a high PLF um, you can you can really uh, right now transfer entire thing to peaking uh, demand to the LNG base of this thing. Um, increased tariff and comparable with global standards would certainly help generation of more electricity based on gas. And we made a little study as to what are the average average power tariffs in some of the countries. India definitely is at the lower end of that compared to some of the things. It's very data we scouted for that and uh, these are the averages of course uh, it might vary from state to state but they are the for the country. Uh, fertilizer, as I said, is one of the largest consumer of, um, you know, uh, gas. India imports uh, huge quantities of gas, so it has an impact on the gas pricing as such also. In fact, uh, when India imports uh, the fertilizer, even the price of fertilizer go uh, vary from, from very high to low, actually. So there is a, a direct connect between that, but this is one of the sectors which consumes much large quantities of gas and LNG definitely finds use in the thing and the kind of policy changes that are coming up in fertilizer policy we'll see more and more gas being recommended to be used or mixed with domestic gas to, and will find use in the in the fertilizer uh, production. CGD uh, this is the fastest growing segment and um, the expectation is about 23 million standard cubic meters by 2017 and this is one area uh, we would be also keen in certain selected uh, cities uh, as I said particularly in the Kochi and we hope that in next couple of years um, uh, some actions would be there tangible to see that uh, uh, city starts working on city gas supply. Refineries, industry, they are major consumers there and for them it is very much affordable and we see um, all the refineries, the Panipat, Paradeep and all, they have come on stream and all of them have started using LNG. All the PCPIRs, the, the Government of India Initiative of Petroleum, Chemicals, Petrochemicals Investment Regions, actually five of them, um, they would be centers for consumption of oil and gas, particularly LNG there. We are there in uh, two of these, one the Hage, the other in Vizag and we hope that they would actually be the driving, uh, you know, engines for uh, LNG consumption. What is the way forward actually? This is my last slide. Well, we think that it would need a robust infrastructure development that is essential and we talk about infrastructure development for gas business to make it more affordable also. You must have gas pipelines that are national and transnational, must have more terminals, must have gas storage facilities as well. Many of the countries, developed countries have developed gas storage also there. We need to look at that. Maybe the government has been thinking and talking for a long time on creating a sovereign fund which the companies can make use of that in acquiring some assets, oil and gas assets outside so that they can bring in uh, equity oil and gas to country which may be more affordable and competitive in price. But overall, I think the government must look at to improve the afford affordability to have a very uh, environment friendly tax regimes and look at some of the taxations and for a long time the declared good uh, status has been pending actually. And if you look at the, the customs duty, the GST, the VAT, all if you see 
uh, and if it could be made more investor friendly, this constitutes about almost 30% of the cost of the LNG. I think there's a need to relook re at that to make it more affordable because if, if, you, if you, you know, provoke people to use more gas, you know, the benefit comes to the state. So that's one area we think and that only would make major oil gas players to come to the country and participate in the project here and would have more investments, would bring in perhaps more gas to the country. I think we need to relook re at these of the issues which directly impact the affordability of particularly LNG in the country. Well, thank you very much uh, for your attention and I'll be happy if there are any questions to answer that. Thank you.